demonstrate for you is over here in the pile here. I, uh, I'm sure you folks have heard me tell you more than once, I go to San Francisco a lot. Both my children live there. And uh, my wife likes to go to the De Young Museum in San Francisco, a very interesting place in Golden Gate Park. And they have a gift shop there. And she saw something kind of like this for sale there. And she said, you know what, you can make those. And I said, well, yeah, I can. But I didn't think they were all that neat. So I decided I was going to improve on it a little bit. So I turned a bottom on it, which I thought was much more attractive and a little bit more unique. And so I did this. I think I've shown you guys this in the past sometime. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make these today. Uh, actually, today, I made all three of these, too, that you see here, with different shapes on the bottom. And uh, that's what we're going to see this after this evening. Oh, cool. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm hoping we can get this done quickly. Uh, I, I turned those three this afternoon, uh, well, this morning and this afternoon, and they probably averaged out about an hour to do it. I'm going to try to do it a lot quicker. I'm not going to make very much of a design on the bottom. I'm just going to do it very quickly, as quickly as I can possibly do it for you all. Um, so what do you start? What, in this situation, I'm using 12-quarter walnut. Actually, I cut the tree down and dried it, but that's another story. And um, you have, to, you have to find the centers on both ends, okay? In this particular situation, you want to find the centers on both ends because you're going to, I'm going to invert this from each direction so you want to know where the center is, okay? So the very, the very first step I do is I drill the hole for the, uh, for the tube, okay? And so I'm using a Forstner bit, a one-inch Forstner bit. Uh, a moment on the Forstner bits here. This is what's called a Colt Forstner bit. If you're going to buy Forstner bits, these things are amazing. They're, they're from France. They do ingrain very, very well. They'll also lighten your pocketbook. Uh, so, they're different sizes. But it works out, they, they do very, 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 very good turnings. So, we're going to start by drilling a, a, a six inch hole in here, which, even with these Forstner bits, is going to take a couple of passes get the job done. As you can see them go in, and, and they really does a nice job of, of, of doing this. And just really, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I've used other Forstner bits before, and obviously you guys have too. They drift a lot. Pardon me? Colt, C-O-L-T. You can buy them from uh, various types of the uh, uh, supply houses, you know. Craft supply, all of them seem to have them. Uh, the bit's about 30 bucks. The holders to do it are about 20 or 30 bucks a piece, too. So they're not cheap at all. Do those bolt bits have their own paper on them? Uh, they, they have a locking system. When I, when I get done doing this and they cool off a little bit, because when you take this out of here, it's hot. They are extremely hot. Uh, so, uh, I'll pass them around so you can see what it looks like. Uh, they go together by a rotation, rotating motion there. And let's see if I can get this so I don't burn myself with it. Extension goes in, rotates, and you put the other one in. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> And um, you have, like I said, you have to have six inches on here to get this stuff. Are those like those ones I, I was just looking uh, today or yesterday in uh, uh, Craft Supply, and they had some extensions for Forrester bits. Is that the kind of thing that... Yeah, uh, uh, if it's called Colt, yes. And the system, the system all, it goes together. It's, you know, it's... No, there's no set screws. It just, it just twists itself in. <laughs> They also make various size ones. If you're going to make pepper mills or anything like that, they have many different sizes for this. But obviously, if you don't make the hole, you don't get the, the tube in there. Look at that. It pulled out, didn't it? So 
you can get this organized right. And from experience, that's six inches. There's a little mark on the on the little extension that I know if I get quite just about there, I have got it to the distance I need. Yes, it is. That's okay, isn't it? Isn't it, Mike? Sure. Do it the easiest way we can. I think I'll stop before I pull it clear out. And like I said, let's see if I can get that to come. I'll let that cool off for a few minutes before I pass it around. Because you don't want to touch it. Because it is really, really hot. A lot of sawdust in there, isn't there? Hmm. Maybe this one will go in deep enough. Now, once you've, once you've turned this... The, yeah. Uh, that that extension is about three three and a half inches, okay. but they do make one that is six or six and a half inches long. So so you can you can make pepper mills or anything with it. They make all different size uh, bits for them. I've even seen like two and a half, three inch Forstner bits. That would be a real turn to put that through in there. Now at this point, what I like to do to make go ahead. Kurt, that's three inches square by how long? It uh. Three inches square. Uh, let me see. Where's my tape measure? I think it's about ten inches, something like that. Oh, here it is in this pocket, of course. Um, actually, yes, it's exactly ten inches long. Thank you. Okay. At this point, I uh, I like to um, just take and put a little taper on the end. You don't really have to, as you can see how I did some of those. Uh, if you just put it in there, you can just set it so that there's a lip on them, okay? So it's nice to turn a little bit of that lip off so that the actual tube will fit all the way in. Okay, now, very simple, very simple turning here. We're just gonna put a small bevel on it, big enough to, uh, to allow the, uh, to allow that tip to go in there. And you notice I had the uh, live center on the tailstock, and I'll, I'll, I'll use that almost all the time because, uh, I don't want anything to come flying out very easily. People in the front row would probably appreciate that too. That looks like it's going to fit. Uh, the reason why I sand this a little bit right there is because if you don't sand it, the tubes don't seem to like to fit. And I think that might fit all the way down in there. I'm not going to take time to force it because I'm going to move on to the next step. Like I said, I'm going to try to move, move on this project just as quick as I possibly can for y'all. Now I'll bring up the tailstock to uh, as you see, I, I've got this thing mounted in some coal jaw chucks right here, and um, I don't, I don't know if that's really kosher or not, but uh, I find I hold a lot of different things in these things, square shapes, anything, anything to just kind of hold it so I can get the opposite side or whatever, just make them work for themselves, you know, work for me. Okay, now you'll see. Put this here. You can probably see there, there, there lines here. And that, I line them up because that's the area I'm going to turn, okay? The rest of it I'm going to leave square because you don't turn this part at all. It's all done on the bandsaw. Now, and part, the trickiest part of turning this project, for me anyway, I'm sure you accomplished turners can take care of this much easier than I can, is to turn a nice square square, okay? It's easy to knock the corners off and get it round. It's hard to keep the square. So you, so how I start with that is, what do I do with it? I start with just a, a chisel, and let's see if we can get this uh, it's straight blade chisel, and I'm going to give this thing a shot. And you can see, I put lines on all four sides so I can see where the line's gonna be. I don't know if, if that'll show up on, the, on that thing there, 
but I take and I just kind of go in just as straight as and easy as I can. I just and I try to cut it so it cuts a nice square shoulder. Oh, it's the bearing. <laughs> I wonder what that funny noise was. You don't want to do that on the square side. The other side doesn't really matter all that much. But this one edge over here on my my right hand side, your, yeah, your left hand side, is what I want to be square. As you can see now, I'm trying to just keep this square corner here. This one I'm just so I can practice with a little bit, I guess. I don't know. But you want to keep it nice and square if you can. going to round it up a little bit here. Parting tool, and I'm just going to try to take it down because, and uh, for the sake of time here, I'm just going to do a simple turn here. just bent my tool. That's what I did. It's cheap series tool. You know. I just turned, my goodness, I've never seen that happen before. It wiggles. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I must be in way too big of a hurry. We'll straighten that up on the other side. At this point, I would sand, sand this smooth. If I was going to make another shape or something, I would just smooth it all off and make it as nice and as smooth as you can get, okay? Uh, once again, I'm really going to try to hurry just so we don't get everybody stuck here all night long. Okay, at, at this point you can see I've turned the square and everything. Now I go to the other end at this point, okay? Hopefully I remember all the steps I've done this with. I did enough times I thought I had it right. 
At this point, I turn around and I go to the opposite end. Because what I want to do is I want to remove the, uh, the piece I, I held it on to at the bottom. Now you bring it up. I, like I said, I want to get it right held up against, against my uh, jaw there so we don't have the possibility of flying into the audience. Yeah, I thought you would, Mike. <laughs> and so you remove, the, you remove the tail. You don't have to have this big of a piece either. If you're, if you're more trusting yourself, you can just make it smaller. I, I'm just doing it. Obviously at this point I will have sanded this so it's nice and smooth as it can be, okay? Doing it before I get ready to part this completely off, okay? Just like that. Obviously at this point, I would sand that end also. Okay, so now you've got your basic bottom shape made, okay? Now to the next step. At this point, you've got to figure out exactly what's going on here because one of the important aspects of this thing is where's the hole in the center? Because if you don't know where the hole in the center is, when you get ready to do the band sawing, you might really screw it up, okay? As you can see, with some of it just, if you get it just right, <coughs> You have this little thin piece of wood that goes down through there, okay? And that I thought that I thought that was a nice little example. But if you do it a little bit too deep, the little thin piece of wood disappears, okay? So that's why you have to do this next step that I'm going to do is that you take and you and you lay out where the center hole is, okay? Because in the, the next step right after this is where you uh, delineate what your curve's going to be. Okay. And you have to do that on at least two sides. Because you're going to make your drawings on, on two sides. Okay, now you, you have this, this mark on you, you see where your lines are at. I use a thing called a French curve. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. And the reason why I do this French curve is so I can get a fairly consistent curve. Now, taking, taking the French curve, uh, I'll just try to make it so that just a little bit of the French curve goes to the inside of that line. So that when you follow it with the bandsaw, you're not going to get too deep. And you can be you know, uh, as, as clever as you might want to be with it. But you draw one line there, then I go over on the other side, and I draw something kind of similar. Flip it over 90 degrees, and I'll do the same thing on the other side, finding, you know, what I think looks, and that one might be a little too deep, because that's what happens when you get them too deep, then, you, then you, the thing disappears. And if it disappears, we're just going to live with that, right? Okay, at that point, 
We got that done. We go to the bandsaw. Now save this piece. See this little spot right there? You want you want this pattern not to go like that. You want this to be deeper. I admit I didn't make it quite right. You understand what I'm saying? I should have had this turned a little bit deeper, or I should have made my curve a little bit farther out so that this piece just falls off. Then I take I'll, I won't bore you with the sanding. I use what's called an oscillating drum sander. It goes up and down, and going out and you just sand it until it becomes smooth. Then I take then I take just a vibrating sander and I do it this way. As you can see, I've I've cut this too far in, so this is going to make this real hard to sand. You usually want to make this so it comes far enough out that you can just go right straight across it. At which point, I take. I guess I can do it right here so you can see it. I take and glue on, uh-oh, yeah, it did, it went through it. And you use double-sided tape. Very handy little item when you do something like this. Put a couple pieces of double-sided tape on it. And you glue it back together, exactly right, kinda. You gotta make sure you put it back together the right way or it won't work out right. And so, this one goes here, the marks are on the top. And I try to line it up fairly close. Same way at the other side. Get those go back on right like that. And you'll see that your pattern now exists on the other side. And as you can see, Again, I've made the mistake here in my haste. Now, before you take the pieces apart, you put them back onto the drum sander and do this, because it helps you get a nice smooth surface. Everything stays nice and smooth, and you sand the back side here. I'm just going to forgo that problem for you guys. And you pull it off. Voila. We have a blood face. <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> Fairly simple process. Obviously, if I wasn't going to take all your time, I would do it, you know, much smoother and nicer and it would look a lot more finished than this. So I apologize for the sloppiness of it, but there you go.